It's said that humans didn't truly understand the concept of nothing, the absence of anything at all, until the GPU launches of 2020 and 2021. And so, with the RTX 3060 launch looming, and we'd expect yet more comments about being unable to buy the card when it comes out, we're revisiting first the GTX 960s. These came out about 2015. We have two of them. We've got a four gigabyte model and a two gigabyte model, and we've done these revisits a couple of times over the years, but now it's time to do another one, especially with the supposed 3060 coming out this week. And this one, we'll be looking at what once was a $200 card in a market where $200 cards almost don't exist other than the 1600 series. Before that, this video is brought to you by Squarespace. Squarespace is what we've been using for years to manage our own Gamers Nexus store, and we've been incredibly happy with the choice. Squarespace makes e-commerce easy for those interested in starting stores, but it also has powerful tools to build all types of websites. Photo galleries for photographers, resume and portfolio sites, and small business sites are all easily done through Squarespace. Having built a lot of client websites the old way before running GN full-time, we can easily recommend Squarespace as a powerful, fast solution. Go to squarespace.com slash gamersnexus to get 10% off your first purchase with Squarespace. So some brief history and some basics. First of all, we have clock matched these. So when we get into the comparisons of two versus four gigabytes in 2021, to the extent that these comparisons are possible, because some games just won't even let you launch it on a two gigabyte card, uh, we did in fact match the clock speeds. That includes the memory speed and the GPU for core frequency. So that's taken care of. The original MSRP was about $200 to $210, depending on the vendor and the model you were looking at for the GTX 960s. They launched in January, January 22nd of 2015, and this was about four months after the GTX 970 launch, which was in September of 2014. And we've already got a revisit of the GTX 970 on the channel if you want to see how it does today. The GTX 980 Ti came out later still. That was in June of 2015 after both of these. And then eventually you get into the 10 series of cards after that. Four gigabytes launched later. So the 962 gigabyte model was the one that shipped in January. That's one of these. Uh, at one point we had four 960s and they were actually pretty different in the design and the quality of the heat sink. So for this particular card, especially in the $200 class, it was all over the place in terms of quality from one board partner to another. That's not uncommon in general, but it's uh, especially common when you get into the sub $300 market because now the partners are trying to cut every corner they can to try and make up their margin where Nvidia or AMD as the GPU supplier otherwise doesn't really leave much room for margin. Nvidia's marketing for the GTX 960 when it launched was targeting MOBAs. Battle Royale wasn't a thing yet. We hadn't yet dreamt of the the, the billions of dollars uh, that it came like Fortnite could create, which at the time these came out was basically a title where if you worked at Epic, you were sent there to work on it before you were fired. I know from experience, we've, we've met quite a few people who were in that position before Fortnite really blew up. So it's, it was a completely different world. Everything was about MOBAs. Uh, the marketing targeted Heroes of New Earth. It targeted Dota and League of Legends because some things don't change. And it also said that the number one GeForce GPU for MOBA gamers was the GTX 660. And so that's what these were trying to replace. We've done a lot of revisits lately and that's just, well, it's because there's new GPUs coming out and that's always helpful from an upgrade standpoint, but also because more than ever, it's useful from a used market standpoint. And as we get into this, we'd recommend that if you're looking for perhaps a 10 or a 20 series card, to upgrade to from one of these, well, first of all, you have a huge amount of improvement available to you if you can get a higher series 10 card or lower series 20 card. And secondly, you should probably check local markets first. Some of you will have better luck with this than others. In our area, there's not a great deal of options for used video cards, but depending on where you live, that might be an okay choice versus say competing with the world, including all the crypto miners on eBay or wherever else it may be. So that's a place to potentially look as we go through these charts. And speaking of that, let's get into the benchmarks. We'll talk about the performance in 2021 for the GTX 960s. GTA seems roughly era appropriate for the 2015 GTX 960. So we'll start there and then we'll get to Cyberpunk 2077. We did have GTA results for this card at launch, but we've changed our testing methodology. The OS has evolved into more malware and we've changed the game graphics settings. So they aren't compatible. At 1080p, the GTX 960 4GB and 2GB models alike both did about 53 FPS average. 
With our updated testing approach, there's also not any meaningful difference in the 1% and 0.1% low metrics, which seems to match the last time we did this in 2019. We didn't notice any severe texture issues, resolution drops, or frame drops with this game and these settings. The GTX 970 maintains an impressive lead of 52%, with the GTX 980 Ti holding its own massive lead over 100% beyond that. One thing's clear, and it's that Nvidia has learned, and in the modern era, it's made sure that there's a GPU skew for every couple frames between cards, given that there's also a 980 that's not here. It's not like the 900 series, where wide, clear gaps were drawn to match the clear gaps in price noting that we don't have a 980 on here. We'll highlight some RTX 30 series cards if you want a modern comparison. The 3060 Ti would be a good upgrade, and we'll see how the 3060 does later this week. At 1440p, the GTX 960 cards fall below 40 FPS average, which isn't surprising, and the two versus four gigabyte results don't deviate. The GTX 980 would still hold reasonably here, and before anyone freaks out in the comments that we haven't retested the 980 lately, We'll save you the time and tell you that a 980 lands between a 980 Ti and a 970. The 980 would hold up fine at 1440p. Good upgrade paths include anything on this list, really, so you can pause and check it out if you want to take a closer look at the 30 or 68 series of cards, but otherwise a used 10 series or 20 series would also be suitable. A 4K is clearly a pointless test for the GTX 960 from a can it play this game standpoint. No one thought they were going to run 4K games, on this card when it launched, but it has one point of value. The GTX 960 4GB and 2GB finally diverge, with the GTX 960 4GB holding stronger 1% and 0.1% lows, indicative of better overall frame time performance as a result of the frame buffer advantage. The easiest way to see if the memory is insufficient is to hunt for frame time spikes, which is exactly what we're seeing here. So as for whether it mattered at the time, the answer is not in this game and you could have saved some money, again, for this game. But it did definitely make a difference, just depends on what you're testing. Further, the extra memory may have been useful for other applications, like 3D artists who are relying on video memory for larger project files. Here's a frame time plot to help visualize things. Lower is better, but more consistent is best. Neither of these does well with the 4K settings, obviously, but you can better see the spikes generated in the 2GB model's data from this data set which empirically plots the frame-to-frame -frame performance. The 4GB model averages runs between 55 milliseconds and 80 milliseconds per frame, which is horrible, but it's at least fairly consistent frame-to-frame. -frame. The GTX 960 2GB model is impressive, though, because we haven't seen frame time deviations this bad in a long time. Actually, it hasn't been that long. We saw it with the RTX 3090 running 8 so-called K gaming. The 2 gigabyte model has a spike to almost 200 milliseconds, a rapid correction after that, and this is what created those hard dips in the lows. They were overweighted by the spike, and so one could argue about whether this is truly representative. Here's the thing, though. We run a minimum of four tests per resolution per game, and in this instance, every single test pass had at least one of these, if not multiple. Further still, it's clear that the frame times are overall higher, even when consistent, so 2 versus 4 gigabytes did matter here. Cyberpunk 2077 is where we get into new titles, and it's also where we have to start assigning mental asterisks to some of these results. In this game, the GTX 960 2 gigabyte card in particular had some serious issues with everything, but image quality is one of those. It wasn't necessarily always the same as the 4 gigabyte model for image quality, and so results get difficult to directly compare. We noticed worse noise in the image and bad pop-in at some locations in the game, but obviously there are lower settings available to play if you have to make it work. We just run this set for our GPU benchmarks. Here's the chart. We only tested 1080p for this one, and it'll be obvious why. The GTX 960 4GB model had a meaningful, measurable difference. You're not going to be playing this game on these settings on either of these cards, so don't get us wrong, but the science is there to support that 2GB versus 4GB does matter in a sense of these results. The degree to which it matters is mostly irrelevant, seeing as 19 FPS average versus 16 doesn't really make it better to play but it still showed up in the charts, and that's cool on its own. The low results also support that the 2GB model stalled out in frame times, where the 4GB model held on. As for upgrades, we'd recommend starting your wish list at the RTX 2060 and up. Hitman 2 came out three years after the GTX 960, but it's still one of the older titles that we have on this bench, so we'll run through that as well. 
At 1080p, the GTX 960 4GB does manage a higher average frame rate and average 1% and 0.1% low than we've seen comparatively in some of the others. Average FPS is a bit misleading here, though, and for the same reasons we've shown in the past. The GTX 962 GB, in the purest technical sense, does perform relatively close to the 964 GB in frame-to-frame -frame intervals, but the high spikes on the 962 GB from occasionally running out of memory are what start to drag down the average. So in other words, it's fine until it isn't. It's similar to the 4 GB card in a lot of frames, but the frames that it's dissimilar in are significant to the experience and thus drag down the average. Anything would be a good upgrade. Used 900 series at the higher end or 10 series cards would be great options if you can find them. Your local markets at this point might be a better place to look than the global online market where you're competing with miners. From the 20 series, the 2060KO or similar might be sensible while also unlocking 1440p gaming. The RX 6800 would be worth considering if your budget has doubled since your GTX 960 purchase. At 1440p, we see similar behaviors, but everything sort of loses meaning since performance is so low overall. You can reduce the graphics settings quality to try and accommodate the 960, but clearly this card is mostly stuck at 1080p. That's not a surprise. It was mostly marketed at 1080p back when it launched, despite being technically able to handle a few lightweight games or simpler indie titles at 1440p. Red Dead Redemption 2 is up now, tested first with DX12, mostly because the 2GB GTX 960 hates Vulcan in all tests that we tried to use it. Or rather, maybe Vulcan hates it. That's okay though. The good news is that DX12 hates the GTX 960 just as much as Vulcan does. We kept getting these error messages with Red Dead 2. Eventually we got it to work. Sort of. The GTX 960 4GB ran poorly, at 26 FPS average and with lows at 12 to 19 for the 1080p bench of Red Dead 2. The 962GB was technically worse, but again, that technicality is only interesting as an academic exercise of the differences in the two models. Otherwise, they're both useless here, uh, with these settings anyway. A used GTX 1080 would be a good starting point for an upgrade, with newer stuff jaunting far enough ahead that you should probably be on the lookout for a higher resolution monitor as well. We technically also have 1440p results, but they're more useful for seeing what to buy rather than how the 960 does today. These settings are just too much for these cards to handle, to the extent that any difference between them is irrelevant in the face of an otherwise unplayable frame rate for both. We'll skip Vulcan as well, because the GTX 962GB just refused to launch it, at least for the settings we were trying to use. Rainbow Six Siege is pretty interesting, and that's what's up next. In this one, we found the GTX 960 SSC 4GB card held about 93 FPS average, with lows at 79 and 77. That's overall consistent, and what we'd call good. Comparatively, it's far, far behind modern cards, at over a 100 FPS deficit versus the 1080 and the 2060 but only the snobbiest of frame snobs will complain about 93 FPS on a 2015 GPU. We assume that these people have evolved to lose their sense of sight and instead play games purely through the electromagnetic radiation pulses emanating from the monitor and from the noises made by their opponents as they grief them in the game. The 2GB model is interestingly behind, with a significant deficit in 0.1% lows repeated across every single test pass, and also a slight deficit in average FPS. This is from a few hard spikes that drag down the averages, but those spikes are what matter most in a competitive game like Rainbow Six Siege. Still, the 2GB card is holding on well for the frame buffer that it has to work with. Horizon Zero Dawn was rough for the GTX 960. The average FPS came out better than some previous tests, but it warned us pre-launch that the GTX 960 2GB was below 3GB of capacity. Thanks, Horizon Zero Dawn, that wasn't obvious. The game ran choppy, and we're not convinced that the image quality was always like for like comparable, but it was hard to tell for this particular title. Used 10 series and low end 20 series cards would be suitable upgrades, and we'll highlight a few of those here. The 1660 Ti and Super Class cards are also worth considering, although not shown here, but you can check our reviews from when those launched to see where they stand relative to the others. Strange Brigade didn't run on the 2GB card when using Vulcan, so we'll just present the DX12 results. The GTX 960 2GB and 4GB cards are roughly the same here, with only minor differences. The 2060 runs multiples of average FPS over the 960, with the 3060 Ti far enough ahead, now over 200 FPS average in this game, that it's in a different resolution or graphics class altogether. We'll stop on this one because we've established repeating patterns. For Shadow of the Tomb Raider, the GTX 962GB card refused to run. 
So we just ran the four gigabyte model. That shows the same story. Nearly anything would be an upgrade. So whether you get lucky and grab a new card or you're getting ripped off on eBay for something old, you can at least know that it's likely to improve the overall experience. The biggest takeaway here is that $200 is like a class that doesn't exist anymore. It's forgotten. In an environment where silicon is completely tapped out, uh, there's just, there's really not much incentive for NVIDIA or AMD to push more silicon into a lower skew of car because they can sell everything they make at the higher end and the average selling price is higher and this has value to shareholders, which is really the only people that these companies answer to since they're public. So that's a problem and it means that $200 for, for a 960 back when it launched, looking at it today, it is, it's good perspective on what we're missing in the market. Typically there is a several month gap between one product launch at the high end, a flagship, a Halo product as it's called in marketing, and the follow-up lower end card. But there's been a dearth of that. There's this void of $200 where with a September launch date of the 3080, typically you would see a 960 type card following January. We're kind of getting that with the 3060. It's near March when it's coming out, which isn't that big of a delay, except the 3060 isn't going to be a card in the $200 class. In theory, the 3060 is going to be over $300. Looks like maybe 330 plus from what's out there so far. But the real problem, the reason there's hesitance there in giving a price is because we all know that's not where it's going to land when it's time to actually try and buy one. And that's because of how easy it is to sell video cards at nearly any price right now. So uh, that's how the 960 performs today. If you happen to have one, Good options to look at would be higher end 10 series cards. Prices are, are untenable from what we've seen on eBay, but check your local markets. You might get lucky. Maybe you'll find someone with a heart who doesn't want to rip you off. Another option would be to try and get a new 1600 series card. Uh, they weren't in these charts, but you can look up our 1660 reviews to see how those do. There's a lot of them. So TI and Super would be the two to look at. It's really just get whatever's available at this point but we do have thoughts on which of those should and shouldn't exist in our review uh, of the latest of them. And finally, if you can get a used 20 series card, it looks like the 2060 and up would be a pretty good place to go. You maybe get a 2060 new now too with it being apparently uh, kickstarted again, come, coming back to life and online for silicon. So that's it for the 960s. Thanks for watching. Subscribe for more as always. You can go to patreon.com slash gamersnexus. If you'd like to get some bonus videos, we've published a few behind the scenes videos lately and some special Q and A's over there or store.gamersnexus.net if you'd like to grab one of our toolkits, our mouse mats or our other products. Thanks for watching. We'll see you all next time.